Hey guys, welcome back to the Bobcat Broadcast. I'm Daxon Trumbull, your host, and this is your weekly news. But before we get started, this is the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand and put your right hand over your heart. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. You may be seated. Hi, welcome back to the Bobcat Broadcast. Today we have Annie LaChasey, our fourth grade teacher. Today we'll ask her a few questions. So Annie, why did you decide to come to OVO? Um, I decided to come to OVO probably, I think like eight years ago. Um, my, uh, I was working at a school that I loved and I loved the staff, I loved everything about it, but it was really far away from home. And when mm -hmm. my kids started school, I wanted to be closer to home and there was an opening at OVO and it yeah. was, I thought it would be a perfect spot. So mm -hmm. I came here. Yeah. What is your favorite book? My favorite book? Um, my favorite book to read with the class uh, is Esperanza Rising. Mm -hmm. um, that's my favorite. I love everything about that book. Yeah. Um, right now, we're actually reading Benicula, um, which is really funny and we crack up every day. Mm -hmm. um, so I love reading that book too. Yeah. What is your favorite food? My favorite food? Um, that's a hard one. Uh, I, I don't really like a, have a, I like to snack. So um, it would be like chips and salsa and guacamole yeah. or like apples and peanut butter. Um, I don't think I have like a, a, a meal as my favorite food. Okay. I like to snack. Mm -hmm. What is your favorite type of music? Oh, the new question. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't think I have a favorite type like food. Um, I like all kinds of music. Um, mm -hmm. I'm pretty easy with that. I do love holiday music. So I'm mm -hmm. super excited for December to come around yep. so I can just blast that all month. <laughs> Just for the month. Yep. How long have you been teaching? Uh, this is my 21st year of teaching. That's a long time. Yeah. So 21 years. Yeah. When and why did you start teaching? Uh, I started te I've always known that I wanted to be a teacher. When I was uh, younger, my best friend's mom was a teacher. She taught first grade. And so I would always go into her classroom when I could and I'd yeah. help her prep and do all those things. So um, I just always knew I wanted to be a teacher. So mm -hmm. there was never anything else yeah. for me. It's worked out. <laughs> <laughs> all right, that's all the questions. Thank you, Annie. And thank you for watching this week's Bobcat Broadcast Teacher Review. Come down to the student store 15 minutes before and after school on Tuesdays and Thursdays. We have cool items like this dog keychain and this color changing pencil. All right, now it's time for Joke of the Day. <laughs> What happens to a frog's car when it breaks down? It gets towed. Where's Dude, Daxon, you, you meant you're meant to fall. No, I'm fine. What the heck? Birthdays for this week are Lillian. November 8th, 3rd grade Tina's class. Baruka, November 8th, 1st grade Hannah's class. Kamel, November 9th, 1st grade Christine's class. Uma, November 10th, 5th grade Kim's class. Aubrey, November 11th, 4th grade Christine's class. Please come to the student store to pick me your free pencil. The upcoming event for this week will be on Friday. We will be writing letters to healthcare workers. Make sure to come down by the swing set so you can write letters. That's all for this week. Now it's time for Class Spotlight. Last week was the Harvest Festival. Grades through kindergarten and fifth grade got to pick out a pumpkin and look at all the classes scarecrows. And on Friday, we have the Harvest Parade, where we dress up in a costume, walk around campus, and you to show all your friends your costume.
That's it for Class Spotlight. The weather forecast for this week is an average high of 68 and an average low of 50. I recommend wearing a jacket or sweatshirt to stay comfortable. That's the weather forecast for this week. I'm Ashley Wonder. I'm in seventh grade and I'm part of the Service Committee and Student Council. Hi, I'm Greta Mason. I'm in eighth grade and I'm a Commissioner of Service. And today here we are with Ali Aguilar. So Ali, would you like to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about and what you do? Hi everyone, I'm Ali Aguilar. Um, I actually grew up in Orangeville, California, probably right down the street from your guys' school. Um, and I am on the U.S. Olympic softball team. So we just got back from Tokyo in July, playing in the Olympics in um, Japan. So about how long have you been playing softball? I started playing um, when I was seven years old in the Orangeville Rec League. And my dad was my coach all the way through. Um, and I just took, you know, a little step by step and made it to college or I went to Casa Roble High School. So that's like very close to you guys as well. And then went to the University of Washington and played softball. And then now with the USA team. So a lot of softball, you could probably imagine being starting at seven years old. <laughs> that is super cool. Uh, have you ever gotten injured by softball at all? Yes, my I think my first like real injury was my junior year of high school and I was playing competitive and I slid I was hit a triple I slid into third base and my knee jammed and I tore my PCL so that was my first injury I remember um, just not being as fast when I came back because I had to relearn how to like walk and sprint so that was probably the toughest thing going through that. So what did you think of Tokyo while you were there? Well, I had been, that was my first time. So I played professional softball over in, in 2018 and 19. I played on a Japanese team, all Japanese. So that was my first experience being immersed in their culture and stuff like that. But I would say um, Tokyo is a very busy city, like New York, but even more, um, but I, what I remember most about Tokyo and Japan in general is the people, their culture, and they're so kind, um, the most hospitable people ever. And they, I, I, if I think of a country that could have done uh, the Olympics during COVID, it's definitely them. They work so hard. Um, they're very kind. We'll drop anything to help you. Like I, it's just, the people are incredible. Um, so yeah, and when we were in Tokyo, we stayed in a village. So we were surround, we were in a, basically if you can imagine like a mini city, like a, like, like a collection of apartments in like one area, but all different countries. So it didn't necessarily feel like we were in Japan when we were there because you see people from um, Africa, people from Australia, people from England. So we were almost like the whole world in this little uh, area at once. So it was pretty cool. What was the best part about being in the Olympics? The best part? Yeah. The best part, probably just like being there, like seeing all your hard work from the beginning of start, like starting softball, like pay off. And it, it's only a dream like, I remember I first started dreaming about being in the Olympics, like fourth and eighth grade. That's when softball was in the Olympics. And I only dreamed, you know, like probably you're like your age, Ashley. And like, just, I don't know. And so then actually being there, I was just like, whoa, this is actually happening. So I think just being there, like, was incredible. So were there any challenges of being part of the Olympics? Oh, yes. Um, I would say a lot of stress. You do feel a lot of pressure just representing your entire country. And in 2008 um, was the last time softball was in the Olympics. It was a long time coming. And so we wanted to be able to bring back, you know, the gold. And unfortunately, we didn't. We brought back silver. But I think just the natural stresses of the sport and representing your country put pressure on yourself. So 
Um, I think that was hard. Also, there was no fans. So that was kind of hard, not being able to have your family there or just fans in general to be cheering you on. So um, I would say those two things were the toughest. Do you plan on being in the next Olympics? You know, I'm not sure. So in 2024 is the next Olympics in Paris, but they voted softball out. So softball is always one of those sports on the on the edge and they into that 2024 softball is not really big in Paris. So they eliminated it. Yeah. So I would probably definitely try to go for that one since it's only three years away, but since it's not there, I don't know. So 2028 would be the next Olympics and I'll be like 32. So I don't know, you know, I could be married with kids or I could still be playing softball. I guess we'll just have to see. <laughs> so is there anything that we haven't asked that you would like to tell us or show us? Um, I don't know. No, not really. Just, I mean, working, I guess working hard is the biggest thing. Like my dad preached to me and, um, I feel like there were moments, um, when I was playing that I wanted to give up or I didn't think that I could excel or get to the next level, but my dad challenged, he saw the potential in me and he challenged me to go beyond what I thought I was capable of. And I know that I wouldn't have been able to make it this far if I didn't push my limits. So I would say, don't be afraid to push the limit. If you don't believe in yourself in the moment, um, something good could come out of it. If you just keep trying and don't give up. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And we hope that you have a great, great day, rest of your day. Thank you. You guys too. Thanks for having me. All State History, November 1st, 1800s, John Adams was the first president to live in the White House. It's also National Cinnamon Day. Stay safe, Bobcats.